Good afternoon, ladybugs and yellow jackets. Welcome to this Sunday's episode of Handmade Home Shopping here on Faye Productions. I am your host, Fairy Princess Lolly, and uh, before it's welcome to this I hear episode from somebody of Home Shopping here on Faye Productions. I am your host. Okay, I hear feedback from you guys. <laughs> uh, I before I jump into the things today, though. Please, please, if you will, uh, like, subscribe, buzz the bell, if you will, and uh, give us give us that little bit of support out there. We do three shows a week, so if you want to get notifications on those shows, then hit that bell, and that way you can be notified when something is coming up. Handmade Home Shopping, Fay News on Wednesdays, and Author Reads on Fridays. So let's see. Hey, Newt, I see you out there. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, next thing before we jump into it is a shout out to today's show sponsor, which is Pixies Potions. And Pixies Potions is a single mom run Tacoma based business that is focused on he healthy alternatives to everyday personal care and pain relief products. They feature high quality, responsibly sourced ingredients from Better Shea Butter, Majestic Pure Essential Oils, and Nature's Best CBD. They also specialize in small batch handcrafted body, face, and beard care products, good for Valentine's, even for the gentleman. Excuse me, I have like a weird little burp there. <laughs> okay, um, and uh, if you would like to check out their full line, please do so. It's at www.pixiespotions.com, and also their information in the ticker and in the low bar. It will be there before, during, and after the show so that you can look it up at any time. And with that said, then it is time to speak with our first vendors today. Let's see, let me make sure I have you guys unmuted. Do we have feedback still? I don't hear it. Okay, hi, yeah, uh, hi, know. hi. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I am doing well. So my wee, my ritual wee magic shop. <laughs> I love the name of your business, it's very cute. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you for yeah, having me on the show, by the way. We were, uh, we were excited to be asked. Yes. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much. I, well, I'm really glad to have you here. If you will, please introduce yourself to our audience. Tell us uh, who you are, where you're from. If you have people you want to give a shout out to, like events or, I don't know, friends or hi, mom. Please feel free <laughs> to do that. I am always a fan of shouting out. So, um, yeah. So, I'll give a quick shout out to my uh, my protégés. My my pretty sure my sons are watching Brandon and Sawyer. So, <laughs> also both uh, awesome artists in their own regard. Um, uh, my name is Ben Watson, and this is my partner Linda Olson. Uh, and uh, we started uh, my ritual magic uh, pretty much during the beginning of the uh, COVID lockdown and of the pandemic lockdown. We had the idea before that, but we had the impetus and the uh, desire to stay home and uh, do yeah. something different. So uh, it really, it grew out of the idea to make magic more beautiful, more, you know, current in terms of its design themes to kind of, you know, borrow on an old mythology and kind of wake it up uh, uh, to the, to our generation and to the generations to follow. Uh, and to make it more affordable, to make it smaller so you could carry it or hold it in your hand, uh, make it lighter, and to make it bio-friendly and locally made. So we've uh, we've accomplished all of that, and uh, uh, came out. Uh, we came out in July, I guess, of 2020, and uh, uh, it's been going crazy ever since then. <laughs> Well, that's amazing, and congratulations on getting things done in 2020. Right? <laughs> yes, I know it was hard. <laughs> well, I, one thing, one thing I did find it, about 2020 was it was really hard in certain aspects, but then some of the things that happened as a result left a lot of people with bandwidth for which they've done things that they have been wanting to or had been wanting to do, and now they were able to do that. So it's wonderful to hear, you know. That, that this kind of a success story, right? Yeah. And uh, I just wanna say also, we all have a little bit of extra time today because we did have a vendor who had to cancel mm -hmm. last minute. So we all have a few extra minutes so we don't have to feel particularly rushed or anything. Um, so let me turn the screen over to you guys and I will go ahead 
and you can show us what you've got, sell us some stuff. So I just want to say to you guys also, if you if you want to name the prices of the things, those watching from YouTube are able to purchase directly in Super Chat by just literally sending the money on through. So, okay. Okay. yes. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I wanted to start. Um, Ben's going to take you through a little bit more specific details around the different gods and goddesses and pantheons and that. But I wanted to start by kicking it off with showing you a ritual kit as we are my ritual. Um, that was our intention, as Ben said, to really make magic more accessible, make it more more modern. Um, and a big part of this was, was being able to create ritual kits um, that are not prescriptive. They're very accessible. Um, and there's something that would work for somebody who's been um, practicing for, for many, many years or somebody who's very new to getting their practice started. So the intent is to not be prescriptive, but to set the framework and provide the tools for someone to um, enjoy their practice as they wish. Um, we follow, of course, the wheel of the year. So the example here is the embolic ritual kit, which um, has been going on for uh, the past few weeks. We're just sold out now as we're working on our Astero one next. Um, but they all have sort of the main core ingredients. I do a handmade bath soap with essential oils and Himalayan salts. And good now, are you able to hold these very close to the <laughs> camera so we can see? You have to hold them close, and uh, if you rotate, you must do it very slowly, otherwise the camera doesn't yeah. have time to rotate. Okay. So that's, so that's perfect. That okay. was perfect. <laughs> that's a good practice run. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then with that, um, as part of the accessibility is a frankincense spray. So knowing that a lot of people might live somewhere where they can't burn sage or burn incense or something, yeah, um, yeah. making this a little more easy to move and use in your practice. Um, and then of course, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Sorry, <laughs> I just, I shouldn't, I should not peanut gallery comment. I was saying teamwork because you were holding the spray and he was holding the card. And I was like, oh, that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> we're adorable. <laughs> Um, so okay. each kit focuses on a goddess or um, anyone who comes from a more goddess-centered practice, like a Gaia-based practice. Mm -hmm. Then I'll talk about our Spiral Goddess collection in a moment. But this is Imbolic. So Brigid is our goddess for Imbolic. Um, she was created specifically for this um, this Sabbath. And um, because it is a Celtic Sabbath and she is really the key goddess uh, around that, and there's always an altar as well. And in this case, because it's Brigid, it's Brigid's cross is the altar that we created um, for the embolic. Uh, you made that? Yeah. Yeah, this is 3D printed. Um, oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we could show an example. Uh, basically, what happens is first we design everything on the computer. So that's sort of like creating the intention. And then we, yeah. and then we 3D print, which is kind of the manifest, if you will. So this is the raw 3D print. And then we take that and we clean it up and hand paint it. So, so wow. pouring in the four elements and adding some color to the actual straw of the cross and giving some silver on the moons. So the whole thing to bring its cross then is is kind of combined into a triple goddess symbol, which is a very standard and uh, Wicca or pagan symbol that's been around for many years. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that is beautiful and. Awesome, and I love how you, I love how you've kind of modernized, like you've made using the modern technology not a thing to be, you know, shunned, but a thing, you know, a thing like this is how we are manifesting our intent, right? So yeah, and I think for us it was uh, what really tipped it over the top was being able to find vegetable and uh, sugarcane based uh, PLA printing filament. Uh, which is also recyclable. In fact, the statues, if they weren't finished, would actually be completely biodegradable, which wouldn't be great. Of course, your statues could just wander <laughs> away uh, all on their own. Um, but uh, we finished them in such a way that it, it takes a, a lot longer for them to biodegrade. But, but making it environmentally friendly and and waking the technology up uh, by you know touching them by hand when you're done for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Easy. Um, so the other elements of every kit is earth, air, fire, and water. Um, our water is always just uh, simple moon water that's been charged by whatever the previous Sabbath was or the previous full moon that we charged it under. Um, fire changes from time to time. Uh, we made incense this time around from herbs from my garden, which was really a lot of fun to do. So you get uh, one and a half ounces of incense along with three charcoal burners um, for that. So and, can I ask a quick question regarding the incense? Yeah. How, for somebody that do, doesn't just do like stick incense, how do you 
burn something like that? It's yeah. actually really simple. Um, so there's a little black charcoal diskette. Um, the only thing with it is you have to be really careful and make sure it's in a fireproof dish, like a cauldron is ideal, of course, because um, it is a little bit more messy. So you light up the charcoal and it sputters and it's really cool. It makes a lot of crackling sounds. And then you just drop like a really tiny bit of incense on top of it and it just smokes away. Like it's pretty amazing. That's the first time I used this kind. And I think you can probably get 20 burns out of a bottle. Like it's, you just use a very little bit and it smells divine, so. Nice, oh, so very similar to how you would do a, like the salts, like if yeah. they, okay. Exactly, um, so like for Christopher Ewell, we did a candle um, for my balm with our first kit. I actually, we still had our garden alive and well, so I was able to do actual herb bundle. Oh, so so just, so it looks yeah. Like yeah, so that was really fun to do. So we change it up based on the season and what's available, of course. And um, then Earth is uh, three hand-chosen crystals. We have a great crystal supplier in Kitchener we've been using, and he sources from all over the world. So we choose three specific crystals uh, aligned to the intention of that sabbat. And then the last piece is air. For this one, um, this is the Torque of Carnunus, which is one of our larger pieces. Ben's going to show you, I think, in a minute. So we did a miniature wow. version of it with bells for air. So um, yeah. neat little piece. I like your interpretation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is the this is the full size torque. Yeah. So you have a that. <laughs> so that's the kit. Um, and as I say, we're doing them for all of the sabbats, and they just change based on the pantheon that we're focusing on. So um, without further ado, I'm going to let Ben talk about more of the gods and goddesses and the pantheons. Yeah. So we've seen some examples already of how we're interpreting the the um, uh, the triple goddess symbol, which is really a full moon, and then the uh, waxing and waning moons on, on either side. So in the Norse pantheon, we took uh, the idea from, for, this is inspired by Freya, the goddess Freya. So it's Freya's shield with Freya's two cats, the cats that pull her sh chariot sitting in each of the moons. And then we made a rune in the center with the uh, all the runes that would make up Freya's name. And then that's surrounded by the Norse compass or Vegvasir. Um, which is a, a great a thing for kind of guidance and finding your way home. So, and, and that comes, you know, in a variety of different finishes, all from the raw print. So here's a, a new one we're doing, which is just black and silver. This was by popular request. I love it. Yeah, and then we also do this one, interesting, with an um, actual moonstone set in the center of the shield instead Whoa. of the runes, right? So we can quite a few of those as well. And then... Uh, uh, continuing in the Norse line, also with Veg this year, this is the one that was inspired by Odin. So those are Odin's crows, Hugin and Munin. That's thought and memory on either side, sitting on the full moons. I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's two mead horns underneath them. That's how you keep the crows happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, and you get a lot more three-dimensionality on the Veg this year on this one. And this one is surrounded by the Futhark runes, the original uh, Viking runic alphabet. So that's that's the that one. So kind of changing uh, changing pantheons. Here's another example of a 3D print. This is Yggdrasil or the Tree of Life. So this one kind of crosses us over from Norse into Celtic, and you can see this is how it comes off the printer, and that's what happens when we paint it. Oh man, those are beautiful. So and yeah, we call them the barefoot moons. They have these two kind of like hang ten, uh, happy bare feet made out of uh, goddess spirals. <laughs> I need you need the moons. So another more traditional example would be the um, uh, the traditional pentagram, and this one's done with kind of some ice pine bows, uh, making yeah. the moons with a Celtic braid around it. And this one looks quite lovely. If you place I, one of the blue goddesses on what? it. What? Oh, is, that looks I really nice. I was actually just, I was about to ask if you could hold one up against your hand just for a size comparison a little oh, bit yeah. for how big they are. So like it with your palm, like behind it, I mean, it's, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I can see. So it's basically about like from your middle finger to your yeah. the palm of your, that's a pretty good size. And that little goddess, she fits right in the middle. That's so cute. Yeah, she's so cute. Yeah. So we can, we'll transition over to the goddesses. So our goddesses, the spiral goddesses, come in a bunch of different colors. And I will hold one up in a second. So greens, turquoise, bronze, silver. 
So these are just the way, these here were made to be our kind of most affordable item. These are basically 10 bucks. So, um, and then we can offer a smaller one for even less, like $7 basically. And if you ask, we can do a little extra kind of shine and finish on them, depending on you know what you're asking for or what you're looking for. We do do a lot of custom orders. We get yeah. a lot of requests for yeah. different finishes. So, and, and these ones here, just to see with my hand, I guess, so you see how big they are, there's four feet. Yeah. yeah, so they're, they're quite tiny, they're quite light. They weigh about 15 grams. So you can carry them with you or, or kind of set them up wherever you want. So everyone needs a goddess in their pocket. So we expanded them. We took the, the spiral goddess, which is a very traditional symbol with always with the spiral on the stomach. We then took that spiral and turned it into earth, air, <laughs> fire, and water. Always still with spirals. And I'll bring water forward so you can see. Ooh, I love Each of them has now a 3D design kind of sticking. Oh, out. when you turn her sideways, she's got a cute little butt. <laughs> yeah, look at her cute little butt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so that kind of wraps up the goddess. I'll show one more where we actually now embed them in the canvas. Oh my gosh, it's these, so these beautiful. Come out, these come out quite different each time. Here. So here's another one. So you can see how these vary quite a bit, depending on the piece of amethyst and how the goddess is going to fit into it. And we found a lovely supplier with a mine in Uruguay and all yeah, family details, mine, family run, and yeah. everything. Oh wow! So yeah. they're handpicked for us by the by the family. Yeah. Okay, we talked earlier about Kernunas because he was the <laughs> top of the. Uh, the bell. So yeah. let's meet Kernunas. So Kernunas is probably his oldest rendering is on something called the Gundestrap cauldron. And he was carved into the side of it in pewter. So we, we interpreted that drawing, which was a flat carving, and made yeah. him he it can made him 3D. He out, basically. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Okay. Lord so, of the forest. Re yeah, exactly, Lord of the Forest, and he chooses you, right? So now recently we started making him a lot bigger as yeah, well. We had a custom request for this size, so we just love him like yeah. that. Yeah, I love him. I've, I've never actually seen that rendition of him, I don't think, and it's, I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's the oldest known, uh, the oldest known 3D uh, rendering of uh, who is known to be Kernunas, and it shows him surrounded by, the animals of the forest and the idea behind the Gundestrap cauldron was uh, uh, really drawing everybody together for the time of harvest, which is a big part of Kernunas. One other version. Of so we've also interpreted him a different way, where he's much more, uh, you know, photorealistic. Yes. With horns and a robe, and he's holding up the torque and stuff, and he comes in a few different sizes as well. Okay, so Kernunas, his. Uh, one of his best friends, the goddess Caraguin. And you can oh, see yeah. you can see the Awin. So this mm -hmm. is the cauldron, the cauldron of Awin. Um, and Caraguin, who's one of probably the oldest, other than Danu, maybe the one of the oldest Celtic goddesses and the keeper of the cauldron, really. Uh, uh, so I um it is 420. So yes. I will say a couple yeah. more things and then we'll okay. wrap it up. All right. So maybe I'll just make a quick switch over from uh, Celtic into some of our Norse stuff, and I'll show okay. together. I'll show Freya and Odin. Here, wait. Let me bring you back over. There okay. We go. So we've got uh, this is our Freya. So we did her as a shield maiden, carrying her shield and with her two cats. Um, and now she's been kind of our scout version of Freya, if you will, mm -hmm. making the rounds. And we've got a new version where coming where she'll lower her cloak. And then this is our Odin. And Odin is kind of inspired across, you know, many of the old renderings of him, many of the different ways of talking about him, and then kind of woken up a little bit with the uh, Neil Gaiman and kind of. Oh, uh, yes. Oh. So, but still with the with the proper spear and with his wolves, American his gods, right? That's American that gods. Yes. And yes. I think the last thing is just to show you how we're evolving the work to get more crystals, more pieces coming together. So this is our Gaia holding yeah. any one of our altars, actually. Yeah. So. Oh, 
So you can just swap those out or put whichever yeah, ones you exactly. want. So we pick different fairy clusters for the quartz and then we can change what she's holding in terms of it being a Vegvisir or a Triskelion or anything like that. That is amazing. Well, uh, wow. Thank you guys so much. Now, I I know you guys have, uh, that was amazing. Your guys' work is beautiful. Um, you guys have are participating in the magic word. Yes. And the magic word for this week is actually a sushi cat, which <laughs> yes, <laughs> we always decide our magic word on our Wednesday show, and so <laughs> that was the word that came out. We get some really crazy ones on the Wednesday we show. We say that a lot because that our familiar will think that we're getting sushi all the time. <laughs> Sushi cat, sushi cat. We like to sing a little song and everything. <laughs> I'm invoking. <laughs> is there, um, so is there anything that you would like to say to everybody before we let you go today? Um, peace, love, and magic. Peace, love, magic. Marry me. And blessed be. Thank Mary you so much. Me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for coming on the show. And for those of you watching at home, just so you know, if you purchase from them within the next week here and you use the magic word sushi cat, you will get some manner of bonus gift Yes. with your purchase so yeah. a little surprise for you something there. we saw on this show that's not available on the store <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much folks Thanks. thank you bye-bye all right we're cruising right along this brings us to our next vendor and i do see you down there let me take you off of mute i had you on mute because i was trying to test for feedback <laughs> <laughs> i mean it makes sense i can i can hear you just fine welcome cloaky you are all done up today. So thank you for coming on the show this afternoon. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Um, last week I watched and I just think it's so cool. You find just the random niche of people of things that you feel like you wouldn't be able to find on a normal Google search. Yes. Well, that's kind of the idea. So everybody else already has something out there, right? On uh, um, when 2020 hit and all of our merchants and vendors and handmade people everywhere lost a lot of venues for it so uh, we here we here we are we created one hopefully a little bit <laughs> so uh, if you will please introduce yourself to our audience and tell us who you are and a shout out to any of your people and uh, where you're from and what you make i mean it looks like you're wearing a little bit of what you make so <laughs> i will not lie like so i'm megan i'm from utah and cloaky cloak Cloaky Co is my business that I started last year in January. So it's been one year. Um, but it all started like I made this for myself. I grew up love watching fantasy movies. I mean, watching Phantom of the Opera and Christine's Capes. I just always wanted one and wondered why did capes ever go out of style? And I went to fashion school and yet I still found myself walking around the kitchen using like bag clips to just hold the blanket around me like a cape as I trounced around. I was like, I sew, why do I not make myself a cape? And so I did, and I had friends and family begging for them. And after making a ton, they're like, why don't you sell them? And my biggest fear is, well, will anyone want them? And lo and Everyone behold, will want them. I was like, I don't know why, just self doubt. And so they're made out of fleece blankets. So they're really cozy and comfy. I've had some people use them as cosplays um, which, I mean, if that works, it's fine. Um, for me, I was all about the snuggliness. And so they're great for camping. I took it on a plane to Thailand and slept on the plane the whole way there because the hood is huge. I just curled up. That um, is actually an amazing idea. <laughs> yeah. And so I have them so you can be cut to custom length from 40 inches to, if you want it extra long at 85 inches long. So if you want to hit at your calf or your knee, like this one I'm wearing here, I shortened for the summertime yeah, let me when the whole screen so we can see you. There we go. I shortened for the summertime so that I can walk around. I could just push it out of my way. I like how you have it cut at this angle, actually. So it's a little bit shorter in front, and then it's kind of swoops down longer in back. I like that. I really like that look. That it makes you. it a little more well it makes it a little bit more manageable right than how you don't do you yeah, know so what i'm trying to say out of your way like there's enough yeah. it goes around you but you're not fighting with the material 
Right. And so that was my biggest thing. Um, and so this one is, I have two different hoods. And so um, this really actually started from a cosplayer who saw my cloaks and he was like, could you make me one with a pointed hood? And at first I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like what and took forever? He was doing a Lord of the Rings cosplay. And okay. so he actually let me use a lot of his amazing, amazing photos on my site. Um, and that's the one that people love the most. And so it's just. Well, so, oh, yes. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, could so you show us the two different types of hoods? Oh, yeah. Okay, super pointy. Yeah, so then it like hits down. Um, and then the Elvins ones, I hand sew a hook and eye closure on the inside so that if you want to put a leaf pin on the outside, there's nothing distracting from that. Do you, are are you able to show us what one of that what one of those looks like uh, close up to the camera? Yes, and so let's see. Oh, so I see what you mean. Sewn on the inside of it. And then that and way, anything that it, yes, you can put your cool, whatever, awesome cloak clasp, you know, because those are, those are their own class of things <laughs> as it turns out, like custom cloak clasps and people that make those handmade and all of that good stuff. <clears throat> and there's some cool ones that they look cool, but if they're bearing the whole weight of the cloak, you might be puncturing holes in the wrong thing. So it kind of gives that extra support, but you can have something pretty and decorative on the outside. Oh, nice. I, I definitely know that those pointy hoods are excellent as uh, as backup pockets too. <laughs> yeah, I was like, er, and then the other one hood is just, it's a classic round hood that I wanted it big enough that if my hair was in a ponytail bun on my head, the hood would go over it. And so that's what I did I love because so much. I love I having my hair up in buttons. <laughs> and I'm so sick of hoods like barely fitting. So they're like up here. Yes. And I just, yeah, I wanted to be able to hide in my hood away from people. And if I want to sit it back of my head, I can, but I have the option. That's right. Or you can, you could even fold it. You could like even fold it back if you wanted to that way. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah. at least that, that's what I've done with some of the ones that I, that I've had in the past where I get a nice big hood and then I can just fold it back as opposed like a, what a, like, you know, like the way you would roll up a shirt sleeve. That's what I'm oh, trying yeah. to say. Um, we of... have a question here from the audience. Oh. Uh, do your cloaks resist the weather well because they look super comfy? They're made out of polyester. So they are like water resistant. They don't like soak up water. Um, they're not. I'm... I mean, nobody, yeah. nobody's suggesting, I think, uh, take it out in the high rain, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's not something that's, it's not cotton, so it's not going to, like, drink up the water. Um, I had someone buy one from Australia because he wanted to work on it in the fields and says he's loved it and it's worked great for him. Nice. Um, and even, so to personalize the cloaks more, I have the option, like, I'm wearing one right now. They either come... The elven pointed hood one comes with the hook and eye closure sewn on the inside. Otherwise, I have satin ribbon ties that I just untied my bow. Or I have different closures listed. So these are all the ones that um, are listed. And these are ones that you guys are the first ones to see them. They're vintage, or at least these three are. Um, vintage cloak clasps that I've been saving for the right moment. They're beautiful. But they kind of just, they, it no longer looks like a fleece blanket. Like it makes it look like an actual cloak, but it's cozy and comfy. And like, mm. I'm not strapless scratch, under here. Not but I'm, scratchy wool. I know, yeah. that, I know that that is always a popular thing, but wool is, to me at least, wool is scratchy. So those look amazing. Did, can I ask you a question? I, I know I don't know if it's an on the spot question, but um, do you have any that have pockets? Is? Um, yes. Yeah, so you can also add pockets to it on all of them. That well, this is the size. These are the three colors that I have, and so the pockets are quite large. You can fit your whole hand in them. Yes. I like to 
either put my phone or like the remote in it. And so if I fall asleep while I'm watching TV and I wake up, I know exactly where it is. <laughs> or they fit lots of snacks. That is the best. This is this is like the Renaissance medieval version of what were those things? Snuggies where they made like blanket robes. <laughs> Yeah, so I used to have a Snuggie and I would wear it backwards because I just felt like I don't want the blanket in front of me. I wanted it around me, but I wanted to be able to get up and move and not lose all that heat I had stored while I was watching movies and stuff. And so that's kind of where this idea came from is that I wanted it to be able to move with me, but still be snuggled up. Except these are way more stylish and cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, fun. I even... So um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, like, so like I have these for fleece that are ready and available, but I've had a lot of people want the really like the really plush thick fabric. And so I can make those as well. And so these are like blankets that I have gotten for orders. They just request a custom order on Etsy. You tell me what color you want. I find it, send a picture for approval. Um, and so, oh, I didn't even mention. Made out of blankets. Yeah, they all start with blankets. That is cool. I was thinking, well, um, I was just thinking you bought the fleece at the store, you know, like at a fabric store, but now I'm like, oh, so cool. So people could actually, what if somebody wanted to, what if they just like purchased the blanket and then it mailed it to you so that they could go shopping for whatever their specific thing that they wanted and then and then had it shipped to you or would you have them send you a link and then you could get that blanket to fashion into a cloak if they wanted something custom it could be either one i mean i think it would be easiest for me to purchase it because okay. then i have the tracking info and i know exactly when it's coming but if they're more comfortable that they want to get it and i can give them my address to send me that works too and then i even this December recently released. I have them in kids sizes as well. So. And it's funny you say this kid sizes because we have a question out here, which is, do they come in Gunther size, which I believe it means enormous. So, uh, cause Gunther, who is one of our Wednesday show hosts is actually six foot nine. So I'm pretty sure when he says Gunther size, he is asking, can you make them extra large? like extra, extra large. <laughs> well, if you want, so they're 90 inches wide. So this one's obviously short, but the 90 inches is a queen size blanket. So it's usually enough to go around someone. But the way I've designed it, it can be made from a king size blanket, which is usually 109 inches around. And- um, King with, size is huge. <laughs> yeah, it, that one's, I've made a king size one and it's a little heavy to move around. And so- it's nice if you have to share your blanket with someone, which I don't, they can get their own blanket. Um, um, but with the fleece ones, you can have it 85 inches long. So pretty sure that's long then, enough. I was like, hit the ground. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to do that math in my head for six feet and six times 12 <laughs> and <laughs> So I'm like, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty positive because for me, I like it about 60 inches long and I'm 5'9". Yeah. Um, that like hits right at the floor for me. You're tall. <laughs> I am pretty tall. So back to the kid's cloak. Yeah. So they, I have two sizes. So a small and a large. The biggest difference is the length. And so... The small is 33 and then the large is about like 45. The small fits toddlers um, around like two to four or I guess it's hard guessing ages because kids grow at such different heights. Yes. But um, yeah, and so they have a snap front closure because didn't want to worry about choking and safety. So they just snap in the front and perfect for the kid who's always dropping their blanket and you're just trying to usher them from place to place, just put it on and they're good to go. Can I ask a quick question uh, before, so we're, it's 435, so we're sort of coming up here. A, a quick question hearkening back to those pockets. So if somebody wanted pockets, then what they would do is they would 
that's that's an add-on so they would buy the cloak and then they can add on whatever pockets they want am i understanding that correctly well so on etsy like you pick the color you want the design you want and then under style there's either the style with pockets or with no pockets gotcha. so it's right there and I even forgot to mention the best thing is that, so I have the cozy cloaky. That's where I got my name from and everything. It has a foot pocket for your feet to go in. So when you're bundled up, you can slip your feet in. There's elastic around it to keep you perfectly cozy. Because my feet get cold, I get yelled at for using my cold feet to touching people. <laughs> so, for wedging them underneath. <laughs> yeah, and so well, blankets, when you wrap your feet in them, you then lose so many inches. So like blankets are never long enough. So then I just take extra fabric and add it on. So you don't have to tuck the ends of the blanket up over your feet. You just stick them in. Uh, question, can we order extra pockets? I love this foot pocket idea though. I'm like, hey. <laughs> I mean, if you want more pockets, you can have more pockets. I don't have a limit on pockets. Yeah, there's, there's no there's no rule there's no hard rule about how many pockets you can have you can have all the pockets as you want to pay for yeah i'm like i'm really great like if someone wants something like the one that comes with the hook and eye closure but they want ribbons i mean just shooting me a message and i can make it work cool um so we have you down for the magic word this week and that means anybody purchasing from you within the, this week if they use the magic word which is sushi cat sushi cat <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah it, it's kind of a story how it's always a story about how we get our magic words but uh sushi cat was a really fun one this week so um then there will be some manner of surprise gift do you want to leave the bonus as a surprise or would you like to show people what you have planned for a bonus um, well, actually, I was going to just add on with one of these, especially these ones that no one is able to get yet because they don't have listed. Or I guess if you want to say Sushi Cat and you want one specific you want, but I was going to add one of these on for free. Nice. All right. Um, awesome free cloak closure class. That's awesome. So, well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Is there anything you would like to say to everybody before we let you go? stay cozy and comfy right well it's january and it's still freezing out so it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much for coming on the show today megan and i hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend yeah thank you thanks for having me this has been great of course bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. all right we're this hour is actually melting away and so we are coming up to our last vendor today which is black cat ironworks and i see you down there dave i'm hello. here hello hi How's i'm it? gonna i'm gonna edit your name just a little just a second so i can put your, <laughs> sure. uh, put your business there as well sounds um, good yes how are you this afternoon oh not too bad i've been been busy this morning <laughs> on the shop all day so uh-huh out in the shop hopefully making many things, oh, yeah. things that you are going to show us uh, mostly uh catching up on commissions but i do have a desk full of knives and, <laughs> and other things I, I make other things too that um, is actually like, something i wish little I blacksmith's like good, like, to say yeah. I, make all the, yeah, I make all the little little basic stuff like you know s hooks and things like that too and uh and then i've been dabbling around in in copper jewelry well, okay, okay, okay. One, one, one second. One <laughs> second. Um, please introduce yourself to everybody oh, first. Tell yeah. us who you are and what your business is. And obviously, you are a blacksmith. Uh, got yeah. that part out of the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and give okay. a shout out to, I guess, uh, on tier for you. Huh? Give a shout out to your people. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm right here in on tier Aquaterra specifically. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm Dave uh, Ingvar Scald in the SCA. Uh, from uh, House Gremlin, and uh, yeah, I, I make knives. Uh, that's, that's what I'm doing now. Uh, I was a DJ before COVID and a karaoke host, and though that whole industry kind of went away, so uh, I had already been making knives as a hobby, uh, and so from there, uh, I was like, well, you know, I'm gonna stream a video game, so, you know, I you know, bought a DSLR camera and set up, you know, I, my whole place that you see here yeah i'm a little uh, uh, jealous of your mic <laughs> yeah a nice mic setup <laughs> oh yeah uh, so i put a bit into that and 
it's really hard to make any money on Twitch. So <laughs> I, I uh, pivoted and, and started putting some money into setting up my shop and everything, and getting that, uh, you know, getting some upgrades done. I'm still not done yet. I need to get a bigger grinder. And um, there's a few other things on the way. I want to get a heat treat oven so that'll make heat treating knives a little easier because uh, I can really dial in the temperature as, a pour, as opposed to using a forge, which it can be, it can fluctuate a lot. So uh, I actually have no real idea what the difference between these kinds of things is. Is are so oh. if, uh, you would, yeah. Uh, please feel free to elaborate on that um, as you show us what you've got here for us today. Cool. Um, let's see. Let's uh, let's start. Let's go small to big. I think. Okay. Um, so I do a lot of kitchen knives mostly. That's uh, that's kind of my bread and butter, specifically Japanese kitchen knives, of which I've only actually got two here. Um, but um, this one's a uh, a small paring knife. Uh, you, it's got a bit of a patina on it because we use it all the time. Uh, I didn't like the way the handle turned out, so we just kept it. <laughs> you didn't like it? I think it's so pretty. It's purple. Uh, it's got some goofy bumps on it that I didn't really like. I could repolish the handle probably. Um, but I made it a while ago and it was one of the first ones I it was one of the first ones I did with resin. Oh, um, so it's not wood. No. It's uh yeah, it's purple resin and I did uh it's a uh aluminum honeycomb at the at the bottom there. Now, how does that work? It, it's not painted on. So what does it mean aluminum? It's it's embedded in there? Yeah. So I've got got a mold and then I I get this uh you know, this stuff comes in sheets of the you know the the um uh, aluminum it, that comes in sheets and then uh uh i just put that in the mold and then pour the uh the uh acrylic in there after you know i put all my dyes in it or whatever i'm gonna add like i've got a pair of uh handle scales right now that are still curing that uh i got a bunch of little tiny seashells off of uh etsy and yeah and put those in there wow and, so and it's filled it with blue epoxy what? That's um, awesome sound. Yeah, they're really cool looking. Uh, I, can't, <laughs> I don't know what knife they're going to go on. I, yeah. I've got another one I did with like uh, drill shavings. Um, you know, the little spiral cuts that you get off the drill when you're drilling metal. Yes. I gathered all, a bunch of those up and put them into a pair of knife scales too. Uh, so that was pretty fun. Uh, let's see. Go next. Fine. So yeah, that's a that's a little pairing knife. This one's 1084 high carbon steel. Most of what I do is, is high carbon steel as opposed to stainless. Um, the high carbon stuff tends to hold a better edge. However, you do have to take care of it more. Um, you know, you definitely want to wipe them down every time you use them and uh, not put them in the dishwasher. Uh, Why? It actually doesn't hurt the finish. It uh, it's the abrasives in the um, uh, dishwashing stuff. Detergent uh, that can wreck the edge on it, and then you got to sharpen it more often. You yeah. know, so what is what does ten eighty mean? So it's the the grade of steel, um, and they, there's all sorts of different de designations for them. And I've got a few different ones here, um, but uh, a ten eighty four, it, it tells you how, what the carbon content is, uh, and it also tells you as a knife maker, it tells you how to heat treat it. Um, so for for like 1084 for example uh you heat it up to i think it's like 1560 degrees and then quench in canola oil or or an industrial quench or or whatever um but different different steels need to quench at different speeds to to be hardened um like if i were to quench it and say water it would probably crack or get micro stress fractures in it um so you don't want to do that but there are steels that you can quench in water and then stainless is a whole different weird animal because most of those are air quenching. You've got a um, either air or cryo quench. So you you either smash them between a couple of big aluminum plates and blast them with air to, to cool them down fast, or um, you wow. get it sub zero acetone. <laughs> like like sub sub zero fingernail polish remover that's what i just heard pretty much <laughs> highly flammable you're sticking something that's like almost 2000 degrees into highly flammable um acetone yeah. what could possibly go uh, wrong? right yeah that's that's why i don't do that 
eventually I plan to uh, use what's called mar quenching, um, which is highly controllable. Basically, you have two tanks full of molten salt at different temperatures. Part of the process of making a knife is after the quench, it's going to be too hard and brittle, so you temper it. And that involves throwing it into an oven at yeah, anywhere between like 325 and 400 degrees, depending on how hard you want it to remain. Um, it basically softens it up a little bit. And so um, one way you can get around having to do that, because I, I usually, it takes four hours. Uh, I, the way I do it, I, I do two tempering cycles of two hours each. Um, but uh, with the molten salt bath, you, you have one that's at like 1650 degrees and you just let the blades sit in there and it'll soak, that temperature will soak all the way through to the middle and it's super nice, even heat. And then when you quench it, you just put it into the 400 degree molten salt bath and then you don't have to temper it because it only cools it down to 400 degrees. I didn't and, even know that salt could melt. Like, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> it totally melts. In fact, that's-, that's I'm learning so much right now. <laughs> In fact, that's been used as a, a flux for welding steel together since, you know, time immemorial because um, it drives, it helps drive out the oxygen. And nowadays I, we use borax for that because uh, it works a lot better. But yeah, the salt. And that's, that's another way you can tell that your steel is hot enough and ready to quench is if you sprinkle a little salt on there and it melts, then you're, you're right where you need to be. Huh. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's go on to another one. Um, this one is a Japanese Usuba. Um, this one is 80 CRV2 high carbon steel, which is really similar to 1084, um, with, but it's also got vanadium in it, which makes it a lot tougher. Um, it's, a, it's an extremely strong steel. Uh, usually when I get new steel, I'll do a, what's called a snap test. I'll do uh -huh. a quick heat treat on it and then break a piece off in the vice and i can then i can see the grain structure and and all that with your bare hands <laughs> no no usually with a hammer oh um, okay in this case uh i almost broke the vice doing it uh and oh. ended up i put it on the step of my anvil and just wailed on it with a three three pound sledgehammer until it finally broke and and i was able to see it so it's pretty it's really tough stuff uh, but this one is what's called a single bevel knife so the bevel is only on one side and so what is the purpose of doing, uh, doing that? Like having the knife be only sharp on one side versus both of them. Uh, so have you ever seen those videos where like a Japanese sushi chef will take uh, a piece of cucumber and they get right under, just under the skin and then they just roll it and peel the skin off. Yes. And then get a big spiral. The, this is the kind of knife they use for that. Interesting. Um, yeah, and then this one, I don't know if you, you'll be able to see it all that well on the bolster. It may be hold, hold, it, hold it very still in front of the camera. And what are we looking for? So look at the bolster. See those kind of like circly bits? Circly bits. Uh, can you ang change its angle maybe, very slowly? Maybe right there. You can see the layers there. Uh, on the blade? No, right here on the bolster. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't that's, know what that word was. I'm so yeah. sorry. Yes, oh, I can't yeah. see those layers. <laughs> um, so that's that's mokumegane. It's a, uh, a Japanese type of, of, it's literally Japanese for like wooden metal. Um, and what that is, is it's actually copper and nickel that are welded together in the forge. Whoa. And then they make a neat little pattern like that. Oh, yeah. You can kind of see that. Oh, yeah, I can there, there we go. There yeah, we go. The circles. Um, and then the, for the wood on the handle, this is... Um, um, Cocobolo and African blackwood. I love Cocobolo so much. Yeah. And then I, I decided to do, I, I probably can't see it that Oh, well, yeah, I can see that right, I, right there. But I etched the uh, the logo in Japanese oh. and all that. So. That is so cool. Yeah, and my little kitty cat, uh, which you'll you'll see in a second on a few other knives. Um, so that's I, that one. I somehow never knew that you did any of this. I mean, <laughs> of all the times that I have sang karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> with with you as the DJ, I uh, right. I just I had no idea. I don't. I mean, I like I knew that you had a forge and whatnot, but I didn't realize I didn't realize it was all this, right? <laughs> so that's what I'm just like so impressed. Yeah. <laughs> um. 
yeah, it's it's something I like. I don't know. I kind of got into it in, back when I was a kid a little bit, and all I had, you know, I couldn't afford to buy, you know, some of these. Like the grinder I'm looking at is is like eighteen hundred bucks. Um, the you know, I, I, the heat treat oven that I'm looking at is is pretty close to that too. Um, and you know, power hammer is a ways away. I mean, those those start at ten grand and go up. Um, so I'm a long way from that. You could buy uh, a vehicle for that, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I started out with, uh, basically an angle grinder and a hacksaw and some old steel files. Cause I couldn't, couldn't afford to, you know, buy my own steel and stuff like that. I wouldn't have even known where to go, you know, other than, you know, junkyard steel leaf springs and stuff. Um, so let's see, let's do some Viking ones. All right. Viking knives. Uh, this one's another one that's, that's, that I did some etching on. Oh, that this is, is actually, crazy. this is Cass's knife <laughs> that I made. Uh, this one's, uh, this one actually started out as a, a file. And this now look at it. Steel file. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, and then I did the the accoutrement in, uh, in copper. Did a little file work on there to make it look neat. Um, yeah. And the handle is lacewood. Uh, Do you make leather sheets for these if they're In fact, yeah. Them? This is the, <laughs> the sheet for it. In fact. Yeah, look at that. I think I have another knife on my desk somewhere hiding around, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, it might be out. Yeah, it's out in the shop. Um, then I've got, this is another sax. So getting into Viking uh, utility knives here. This one is actually three layers of steel. It's um, 1084. No, this is five layers of steel. It's go my. So it's... Um, 1084 and uh, what's called 15N20, which contains a lot of nickel. And what happens is when you etch it, the nickel doesn't etch as dark. And so you can see that's why it's all shiny in there. Yeah, it looks it looks all like a yeah. cool watery kind of. Yeah. Effect. So you, basically you, you get this, you know, you stack up your billet and uh, it, you know, it's almost like metal plates, you know and tack weld them together and then you throw those in the forge get them up to about 2400 degrees or so and then fuse them together can i ask a question about that whole thing when you're mixing metals like that mm -hmm. i just pretend that i am a kindergartner sure. uh, don't hand me sharp things and please tell me all the answers uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> when don't, run, you... don't run with saxes either it, right <laughs> uh when you do that, when you mix the metals together, is that because it makes them stronger? Is it because it's aesthetically pleasing? None of the above? Some of the um, above? A little bit of both. Um, so in this case, both of these steels are high quality, high carbon steels. Either one would work great for a knife on its own, and I've made knives out of both. Um, the reason for doing it, like for this knife, is because it looks cool. So... Uh, uh, but like, if you look at like old Japanese swords and things like that, yeah. uh, the higher carbon steel was kind of at a premium. And when they, uh, when they would smelt their iron ore, they would separate the pieces of, of the higher carbon stuff and the lower carbon stuff. And what, it, what they'd end up doing is they would sandwich it all together to make the final blade with the, uh, with the low carbon softer metal on the outside and the core would be the high carbon stuff. So that way you get the mass that you need to cut with, but you're not using up all of your, your high carbon steel on, on one sword. Interesting. So stretch it further. So a question then, how does somebody tell for, you know, how does somebody tell when they're say looking at a bunch of knives on a table, what is the quality blade versus the not quality blade? That is kind of tricky. Um, a lot of that comes down to fit and finish and just kind of asking the maker what they know about their steel and stuff like that. Um, and hopefully they're truthful about it with you. Right. Um, but yeah, you can't really tell by looking at it. And even, you know, one of the things we do to, you know, when we get, like I, uh, the vast majority of my knives, I, I don't really mess with scrap metal. Mm -hmm. uh, because you just don't know exactly what it is. And uh, um, so therefore you don't know how to heat treat it properly to get the best out of it. Right. Uh, 
but you can do a spark test. You can hit it with a grinder and see what the sparks look like. And if you've got, if they look like kind of like fireworks, it'll, uh, um, that's usually indicates that it, it's got a high carbon content. But it doesn't tell you exactly what kind of steel it is. It well, what would they look like other than fireworks? Um, they'd usually be like longer sparks with less like popping at the end. Okay. Yeah. I, I, that actually, that actually yeah. certainly makes sense to me. Yeah, <laughs> and a little more orange in color. Um, but yeah, we'll now, see. You had some other stuff too that you were holding up there at the beginning of the oh, show. Yeah. Let's, let's see some of that. Okay. Uh, I've also got like a couple other knives to show too, but I'm saving the big one for last. Uh, okay. So yeah, I've been doing some some copper jewelry as well, um, with a couple of them. And now, do you seal these? Because I know that copper jewelry, when it gets wet on some folks' skin, can do a yeah. So I don't with these because you never know what somebody might be allergic to. That is a as good far point. As like you know, sealing them. I do leave a patina on the back. I don't know if you can see that that well. Yep, so I can on the back. So I've I wear this one all the time, and I haven't had it turn my wrist green um but uh it could easily do that and the easiest way to seal them is just a coat of clear nail polish yeah uh it does the trick it makes me think that uh you should you should get together with the cloaky gal and right make i can make cloak pins i can yeah. totally make cloak pins i just don't have any on me right now because like every time i make them somebody buys them and then i'm out uh, <laughs> i need to make a bunch more handy. <laughs> yeah, they, they sell really quick. I had I had one time somebody came over to visit Cass and uh uh I sold one while it was still warm. <laughs> Not even cooled yeah. off yet. Yeah, I hadn't off, even cooled off, off yet. <laughs> yeah, I just you know yeah, I just finished it and she was like, Oh, that looks nice. I want that. How much? <laughs> um so yeah, and but I you know, I do do like little S hooks and things like that too. And so, uh, and this year for Christmas, I gave my my family candy canes that I made out of uh, wrought iron. Oh, uh, oh, a wrought iron candy cane! <laughs> right, I can make you one. They're pretty easy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm you want, I'll make you one. If my cats pull it off the Christmas tree, it lands on their head and maybe gives them a little bit of a clunk so that they learn not to do it. Again. <laughs> right, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? So I've got yeah, I've got a couple more to show. Um, this one is a little more exciting pattern weld here. Yes, it's Damascus. That's yeah, this is what's called a K-tip Gyuto. Uh, it's a Japanese knife. Um, the uh, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you the the handle on this one. This is a uh, ancient bog oak. It's like four thousand years old or something like that. Wow. Uh, and then the the bolster and butt are bronze. Um, this one, uh, the 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 metal bits on the handle are nickel. Um, the oh. middle is uh, amboino or uh, tuya burl. And then the rest of the handle is Wenge. It's an African uh, hardwood. Yes. And then we've got this guy. This is a German style chef knife. And I did a, uh, an acid etch on the blade. So you don't have to worry about it developing uh, a patina because uh, it already has one. It can still rust because it is high carbon steel. Um, this one I is- Prevent them from rusting. Um, you get a little bit of olive oil once in a while. You just kind of smear it on there. Uh, easy peasy rusting um, and then this one is is african blackwood and tuya burl i like the design of that handle. I, got my, I got my little kitty cat on there yeah I, I really like how this one turned out um we've actually been using it in the kitchen so <laughs> and it, it works really well it's nice and sharp tried and true you yep. can can confirm yep and then yeah i'll save the biggest one for last this one i just finished up uh about a week ago or so i think got a big giant cleaver Oh my God! And so the handle is Amboina Burl with uh, black G10 liners, so they sit on either side of the steel. Um, mostly, it just looks cool, so you can see on the spine. Yeah. Like it does, no, it does. Like uh, really, kind of stands out more. And then African Blackwood, uh, and then this oh. one is this one's also 80 CRV, uh, 80 CRV two. And yeah, you know, if you need to hack a moose in half or something, uh, <laughs> there's your your knife. <laughs> Actually, I've been, you know, I've posted this one up on uh, Marketplace a couple of times, and it keeps getting them removed for violating their weapons policy. I'm like, it's a kitchen knife. I mean, it could be used as a weapon, but it's a kitchen knife. Anything could technically be used. Right. Bernie, Bernie Sanders in a chair could be used as a weapon. I right. mean, throw them hard enough. Yeah. 
<laughs> force equals mass times velocity. Um, um, can I just ask another question? Okay, sure. this will be my last question about this. <laughs> um, because we're we're here at five o'clock. Why yeah. is why do they always put a hole in the? Oh, it's so you can hang it up on a hook. Oh, like an S hook. I had to look that up because somebody somebody asked me that before. Um, <laughs> And it was, I was actually making someone a similar cleaver. It's actually where I got the design from the, for this one in particular, because I was making a custom one and, uh, and I kind of sketched it out and, and, uh, and made one. And, and once I got it profiled, I was like, that's sexy. I'm going to trace that onto a pattern so I can make another one. And, um, and, but yeah, I asked him if he wanted the hole in it and he was like, he was like, uh, sure, I guess, but what's the hole for? <laughs> and so I had to look it up, and it's, it's just to hang it on a nail or a hook or whatever. I guess because they are kind of a bit big for a wood block, aren't they? Yeah, and it, it turns out it does work really well because you know all my finished knives I, I bring in from the shop so they don't get you know sawdust and metal dust and epoxy dust all over them and all that. Uh, and so uh, I hang them up in the kitchen, and I actually just got a second knife rack for the kitchen because I ran out of space um, between, you know, all our own knives and then the, the knives that are waiting to, to, to go to their forever homes. Um, well, and, and so as I understand it though, the, your knives that you make, you, you sell them relatively quickly and you do a lot of custom stuff people request mm -hmm. of you. So yep. um, just, can you elaborate, speak to that a little bit? And then, um, then we'll go ahead and I think part ways today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for the most part, like uh, I'll usually post them up on on Facebook, and usually within like a couple hours, uh, uh, it'll sell. Sometimes they do take a little longer. I had I had one go a couple weeks before a friend of mine saw it and and ended up buying it. Um, and uh, but you know, I also put them up on uh, marketplace if they don't get taken down for being weapons. Uh, <laughs> and people, if they wanted something custom, could they? send you a message via your Etsy store or yeah, either Etsy or through Facebook uh, or Instagram. Um, Instagram okay. Yeah. Uh, I've also got a Mercari store. Although okay. I don't have much listed up on there right now. Um, they take 10%, which is a bit much. Oh, that is. Yeah. That's and whereas Etsy only takes five. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> all all like, the little hidden fees. Yeah. Like, places hide. So. Like I, I typically sell these, like if I was selling these bracelets at like an SCA event or whatever, I'd charge mm -hmm. 15 bucks for them. Right. Um, and uh, so I put that as the price on Mercari and they have a mechanic on there where you set a floor price and basically you can get haggled down to that floor price. And once the floor price is hit, they turn off smart pricing. Um, so I, you know, as an experiment, I put a couple of them up on there and sold one and it ended up going for 10 bucks. I had also included free shipping. So my take home on it ended up being like $3 and some odd, you know, some change, which doesn't really cover. I mean, they don't take that long to make it, but it, it doesn't really cover the time and materials. Right. Um, so uh, I'm not going to bother with it. Uh, but knives on the other hand, like I could lose 10% and be okay. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ish. Uh, so, mm, but Etsy is Etsy is probably the best place to go then to do the thing. Plus, Etsy has a, a system set up for doing the custom requests as well. So mm -hmm. they do indeed. Yeah, and in the meantime, I'm you know working on getting a website up eventually. Uh, but I'm planning on like I'm actually kind of hope I don't sell a bunch of them. That way, I can build up enough stock so when like attorney season starts, I can actually set up a table and I have stuff to sell. I mean, it's a good uh, problem to have, right? right? <laughs> right. It just means I have to get a lot faster at making knives, which means you know pretty soon I'm going to be dropping like you know 1,500 bucks or more on a grinder, which will speed up the process a bit. Yeah, and next by this time by this time next year, you'll be taking on apprentices, my friend. <laughs> I kind of have one. I've, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Squirrel, right? Yeah. From AFK. Yeah, yeah. yeah, her son, uh, Silas. Yeah, he's oh. been helping out in the shop and stuff, and he started working on his own ni first knife. Well, congratulations, Silas. Uh, yeah. you'll, have to post, you'll have to post final pictures for mm -hmm. when it's done. So I, yeah, I definitely look at all your pictures that you have that you put up about. Uh, there was one really pretty pairing knife I think I saw a while back that I was like, ooh, it's nice. So, so, is that um, this one? <laughs> I don't know if it was that one. I seem to think that it was think longer and thinner. 
but maybe That's I'm the only pairing knife I listed. Well, maybe I also don't know the names of my knives. That is yeah. also that is super, super. <laughs> yeah. Like, is this a knife? It's a sharp, sharp, pointy yeah. thing. And, um, so, with uh, with all that said, then it, we're a little bit over our time tonight. That's yeah. okay. We don't pumpkin or anything here. But uh, yeah, thank yeah. You so much for coming as long on. as we don't, as long as we don't get into my D and D time, which comes up at six. <laughs> Nope, nope, They've nope, got nope, a D and D game to run. We're actually at the end of the campaign. They, you know, as soon as they. Oh my god! What? <laughs> yeah, they, as soon as they finish killing that dragon, that's that's the end. So, oh man! They got, they've got some help from some storm giants, so I think they've got it handled. All right, well, folks, that brings us to the end of today's yep. show. Uh, just a reminder for everybody: our uh, magic word for today this week actually is sushi cat so that will um it should also be in the low bar as well thank you for joining us today dave we're on sunday that means our next show will be on wednesday for fey news i would also encourage you guys sushi cat if you go to last wednesday's fey news show enter the magic word sushi cat so that you can be entered to win the cool hand sculpted soap and uh, it was a soap and a little sculpture that went along with it from last week's vendor. And then we will be drawing for that winner this Wednesday. And then, of course, Friday is Author Reads. And I think with, the, with that said, everybody smash the like and subscribe button. And we will see you in a few days. Yeah, Bye, hey, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Where'd I go? <laughs> I don't know. My computer just did a thing right there. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello friends, this is Gone for Hammerhands. Thank you for checking out Fairy Princess Lolly's channel. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to support these magical creations, fly over to our Patreon and join the fairy family. Safe travels.